This is the M1 Mac Mini and it is my first ever Mac and now Apple have just dropped the new M4 Mac Mini. It's smaller, faster, shinier and all round awesome. And with all of the new releases from Apple this week, I think that it was the M4 Mac Mini that was the most exciting. But should you really be racing to upgrade if you already own an M1 Mac Mini? I'm going to give you five reasons to stay loyal to your trusty M1. And yes, we'll also dive into the flashy M4 Mac Mini features just so you know what you're potentially potentially missing out on. Let's start with the fact that the M1 Mac Mini is still a powerhouse. When Apple launched the M1 chip, it changed the game. The transition to Apple Silicon completely reshaped the expectations of performance, efficiency, and integration in computers, especially in compact devices like the Mac Mini and MacBooks. Before Apple Silicon, Macs used Intel chips, which are fast, but that speed came with limitations in energy efficiency, heat management, and integration with other Apple hardware. The Mac Mini was one of the first Apple products Products that featured Apple Silicon. If you got this M1 Mac Mini, remember the first time that you fired it up and realized that it could handle multiple apps, editing and streaming all at once without a fuss and almost instantly. And to this day, I'd say that most apps are still efficiently opening straight away. Sure, the M4 is faster with a 10 core CPU instead of the eight that you get on here and a 10 core GPU instead of the eight, yep, you guessed it, on here. With up to 32 gigabytes of unified memory instead of the 16 gigabytes that you get get on the M1, but with all that power and efficiency that comes with the M4, unless you're out there trying to solve complex issues with simulations or processing 3D renders with high demands, then the M1 most likely has still got you covered. And with all the talk of the Apple Sphere about Apple intelligence, all of the Apple Silicon Macs with M1 and newer, including this Mac Mini, will be compatible with it. Apple has finally given us front USB-C ports and a headphone jack with the M4 Mac Mini, which is definitely a good design improvement. Until you remember that you've probably already got a cable system that works because you've had to adapt to those ports at the back. And with adapters and hubs, you can handle almost anything from extra monitors to external drives. I'm sure that we've all lived with that one awkward reach at the back of the computer and survived in most cases. Is it worth shelling out for front facing ports and a power button on the bottom? Probably not. As well as giving us those extra ports, its smaller size has also removed ports. Those USB a ports, which is actually one of the ports that is permanently in use on my Mac Mini. And before you say, yes, I know you can buy port adapters, but should that be a reason to upgrade just to have to purchase additional adapters? The M1 was built to be crazy efficient, which means less power consumption and less heat. Now I've had this almost four years now, and while it doesn't see the usage that it once did due to me having a this MacBook Air, which does everything for the channel now from editing to admin, taking over from the Mac Mini, this Mac Mini still runs almost as silent as it did when it was brand new, which means that it's still rock solid in performance per watt. Yes, the M4 is smaller and a bit more efficient, but hey, we're talking about improvements that might seem a lot on paper and on graphs, but in reality, the average user is going to find those improvements barely noticeable. Plus, sticking with your M1 means that you're saving hundreds of dollars or pounds by not upgrading. More money in your pocket means less buys remorse. But is giving everyone Mac OS Sequoia, even the M1. This update is going to bring all of those cool Apple intelligence features, meaning you can still enjoy the latest without having the latest hardware. Plus, Mac OS, as we know, has always been super optimized for Apple Silicon. One of the big selling points of the M4 Mac Mini is it's Apple's first carbon neutral Mac, which is good in the age of manufacturing and companies trying to be more environmentally conscious, which, which is cool. But, and here's a wild idea. The greenest computer that you have is the one that you already own. Holding on to your M1 is a pretty sustainable choice, especially since it already performs like a champ. So congratulations, by sticking with your M1, you're saving cash and how helping save the planet at the same time. 
Now you might be wondering, is there any reason to consider upgrading from your M1? Well, yes, the M4 Mac Mini has some awesome perks. First off, the M4 packs more power with this updated M chip and the M4 Pro option gets you up to 14 CPU cores, 20 GPU cores and up to 64 gigabytes of unified memory. So yeah, if you're a pro user needing insane performance, this upgrade might be very tempting. The M1 Mac Mini only came with the entry level chip, so pro users had to wait for the M2 version before they were offered a pro iteration with pro-like performance. And with that massive design change with it being smaller, I think it's brought the Mac Mini into the modern world because that design of this just hadn't changed. Now this properly looks like a mini Mac Studio. In the design process, Apple have obviously finally stripped this design back and said, how small can this go without making any compromises and still incorporating a new thermal architecture? Well, that's how. Now it's at a great functional size, the size that it should be, considering the amount of space that's actually inside this. There were rumors of it being the size of a Apple TV unit, but the size it is, is perfect. I'm somewhat hoping that Apple, in line with their design approach to their desktop computers, makes the Mac Pro, if they decide to continue with it, the same design language as the Mac Mini and the Mac Studio. While I talked earlier about the removal of USB-A ports in favor of more USB-C ports, we are, of course, living in the tech age where fewer new accessories are anything other than USB-C. So the issue might not be so if you're getting new accessories, but what happens with your existing accessories. But with that upgrade of the USB USB-C ports from the original transfer speeds of the Thunderbolt ports on this. These have now been upgraded to Thunderbolt 4 ports with Thunderbolt 5 ports featuring on the M4 Pro versions. So data transfer speeds and additional monitor setups up to three displays are going to be next level for those power users. I'm not too fussed about the power button being moved from the back of the Mac Mini to the bottom. I've heard a lot of arguments on both sides this week where people have said it was a poor design choice and others who have said they never turned their Mac Mini off. So it's irrelevant where it is. As long as it's, you'll probably find a way of adapting to it if you do choose an M4 Mac Mini. Let me know in the comments below what you actually think about the power button being on the bottom of the new M4 Mac Mini. If you've got an Intel Mac Mini, which probably almost looks identical to this, apart from the different arrangement and assortment of ports on the back, then you'll experience the greatest all-round experience in both hardware and software, as not only will you get that new design, but with that transition to Apple Silicon that so many of us that got the M1 generation and have also got the newer iteration since are already familiar with. Just with that M4 chip, you'll experience a chip that is up to 20 times faster in performance, higher bandwidth ports, faster wireless speeds, and something that is built for Apple intelligence. If you do make that switch, you're in for a treat. And the same goes for PC users who Apple is still targeting to make that switch over to the Mac. And the best thing about the new entry level M4 Mac mini is that it still starts at £599 or dollars. And if you're a pro user, then there is that staggered upgrade of the Mac mini to the M4 Pro before you even get to the realms of where a Mac studio would be better for you. But for most M1 users, all that extra performance is probably gonna sit unused. The M1 Mac Mini was a total game changer, and it still is. Unless you're someone who needs cutting edge specs for serious work, or just has to have the latest tech, then the M1 Mac Mini still remains a beast. Let me know in the comments below if you're sticking with your M1 or if you're eyeing the M4. And if you do want to get the new M4 Mac Mini, I'll leave a link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.